Good morning, welcome to the episode of Breakfast Analysis. Today we are talking about Challenger League in North America, um, as is a common topic on this YouTube channel. And we are going to be focusing on both uh, the US and Canadian side of things. We've been doing a lot of Canadian uh, content on this channel recently, so we're going to be focusing mostly on the American side. Um, there's also just better teams and, and more interesting stuff going on on the American side. Uh, before we get started, got the Rewind 2 shirt. Going on today from uh, Team Fortress 2, like world championship type stuff that happened a couple years ago. Um, and let's jump into things. So, talking about the qualifiers, where are we at right now? Well, as of recording and also as of uh, this video coming out, um, we don't have any of the American teams decided just yet. We are still in the middle of qualifiers. So, last weekend, um, both regions played until there were 16 teams remaining. And now this weekend that's coming up, they're going to play one final game to make that top 16 into a top 8. And those top 8 are going to be the Challenger League teams. You might be a little bit confused because uh, you may have noticed that there's already a bunch of Canadian teams that are supposedly already in Challenger League. This is true. They played their games early. There was like a, I don't know, I think there was like a mistake on face it side or something um and so some of the canadian games that were supposed to get played this weekend were played last weekend so six of the eight canadian teams are already decided the last two canadian teams plus all the american teams will be decided this coming weekend i think that's on the 13th 13th pretty sure um so that's when all those games will take place we'll figure out who they actually are let's start off just talking about um the canadian teams that have already qualified quick overview of who these teams are and you know how we expect them to do first of all was honor honor esports were able to make the top eight of the pro league qualifiers which happened uh like a couple weeks ago they did lose to nordic in the grand finals though to play for their spot um which means they didn't make it into pro league but they've come back now and they've managed to make it into challenger league honor esports is a very good canadian org they're a very good roster definitely players that i reckon that i recognize from uh, the canada nationals and so that's a, that's a very competitive roster that we could definitely see make it to Canadian Pro League in 2021. Um, then you have Les Cornets. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. My French is not good. Um, who didn't play in the Pro League qualifiers, but they have some notable players. LSG, Stelio are uh, definitely names that I recognize. I believe this is a French roster due to the name and also because I'm pretty sure LSG and Stelio um, are Quebec players. Don't recognize the rest of the names on this roster, but there's at least some talent in there, so I have faith that this will be a decent roster. Um, Oceanus is another team um, that in the Pro League qualifiers made it to the final round, but then lost. They ended up losing to Mirage, which is Flynn's team. Um, and this is a, probably a little bit weaker of a roster on paper, but they've definitely been putting in the work, and I think you could tell um, based on like their Twitter activity and their league activity that they've really been uh, grinding for this. So, um, Phoenix, Exod. Dark End, Kibbs, and Japanadian. Again, these are uh, decent teams, which you should rec or decent names, which you should recognize if you were paying attention to Canadian scene last year, or if you were paying attention to even the Pro League qualifiers a couple weeks ago. Then you've got Orglis Canada, who made it to top 16 in the Pro League qualifiers, eventually losing to Rat Corners, which was another pretty good team. Again, relatively known names on Orglis Canada, like Pyrax, Boomski, uh, Frosty. You know, not the most notable names. Probably this isn't a squad that's going to, you know, jump out of the gate right away and wow everybody. But again, definitely not nobodies. Um, and you can tell that they've been grinding. They've got uh, they've got some league time in in the tier three leagues, which is always nice to see. And uh, they've been practicing, which is good. Then you've got Proximity, which is a team that ended up getting top 32 in the Pro League qualifiers. They ended up losing to Oceanus, who also obviously qualified for Challenger League here. Um, and Proximity seem like a pretty good team. They've got Profit, the American player who many fans might recognize from being pretty good in Challenger League in a few recent seasons. They're also playing with like London, Toasty, um, TGing, and W9S. I don't know those last two players, but London and Toasty are, are well-known Canadian players. They've been around the Canadian scene for a while. You know, great guys. Um, definitely uh, lively personalities. Always, uh, always get the fans... <laughs> So I think the proximity uh, will be uh, another very competitive team for sure. Then you've got Team Madness who have qualified. Um, don't really recognize any of these players. And from what I can tell, like from what I remember at least, I don't remember them playing in the Pro League qualifiers. They very well could have. Um, but this is definitely the biggest question mark that have qualified for me so far. Team Madness, don't really recognize any of the player names. Um, never have seen these guys before. So hopefully they can surprise people and do well. 
The last two games that will decide the final two spots for the Canadian Challenge League qualifiers are CDN versus We Are Weebs. I have no idea who any of these players are. Uh, again, no offense to uh, the guys playing on those squads, but kind of irrelevant names. And then Axios versus Aviate, which is at least two different orgs that are going to be participating. Aviate probably going to be the more well-known name. Um, they have uh, they got to top 16 in the Pro League qualifiers. They lost to Mirage. So again, another team that have had those decent performances in the past. Um, but still no real names that are sticking out to me as like, oh yeah, these are players I recognize. So that's the Canadian uh, Challenger League scene. And we can jump into the American League. So again, we've got 16 teams still fighting for this spot. I'm just going to go matchup by matchup and talk about um, who's going to be playing for each spot. Most of the former Challenger League teams are present. None of them have to play each other. Um, I think the exceptions are Okami have sort of broken up and their players have gone different ways. Reckless have sort of broken up and their players have gone different ways. And then Shook Squad um, have broken up and their players kind of all just like don't play comp anymore. At least at this level from what I can tell. So um, five out of the six or five out of the eight teams from last season definitely are represented here in the qualifiers. Um, more or less, definitely some teams have had some changes. So it's good to see um, that most of these teams are still surviving and are still able to um like jump into this ecosystem despite the fact there was no like auto you know win challenge like season 11 come over to the 2020 season you know so it's good they're still here our very first matchup to make it into Challenger League will be PogChamp versus 12 Reigns Deep. PogChamp, again, should be a name that most people recognize, but they've had some roster changes. So in Season 11 for Challenger League, they were playing with Chala, who's moved over to TSM, and Filthy, who's moved over to another qualifier team, which we'll talk about in a minute, called Rent Free. In place of those two players, they've picked up Jarvis, who, again, should be a very familiar name to players or to, uh, to fans. Um, was playing in Pro League last season on Luminosity Gaming. And they also picked up Sweater, who's been an underage player for a long, long time. Not one that I uh, know much about, but I've heard good things about him. And he's got a lot of those like CCS and like Tier 3 League um, experiences under his belt. So, you know, certainly a, a well-known name. And I think, if I can go on a quick side tangent, I think there's a lot of these like underage, like just turned 18-year-olds um, that are going to be popping out of the Tier 3 scene and have been popping out of the Tier 3 scene straight into Pro League, straight into Challenge League, straight into Challenge League qualifiers that are going to be big question marks for people like me and for fans who haven't really been paying attention to these Tier 3 leagues. Um, but because that they're able to, you know, practice with the pro players, they still get in those scrim times, um, they do get noticed. And so you'll probably see a couple more of these names pop up Um in just like, well, I have no idea who this is, but they're on a pro league team. Well, why? Because they've just turned 18. They've been practicing against pro league players for like four years, right? So I think Sweater's in that sort of same boat. It's like iconic and uh, and like, um, who's the most recent one that just got picked up by Disrupt? I have this written down in front of me. NJR. Like, <laughs> some of these players are just so like out of my mind. J90 as well is another one. But um, definitely some strong players there. So Sweater's one of them joining PogChamp. Definitely the favorites in this matchup. They're going up against uh, 12 Reigns Deep, which is not a roster I really recognize. They do have Dox G, who played on Reckless uh, last season. So that's sort of where a little bit of Reckless have gone to. Um, but the rest of those players are not names that I recognize. I don't expect them to be able to take down PogChamp. It would be a massive upset um, if 12 Reigns Deep managed to beat PogChamp. You know, you all, you all knew that. And we've got Depth Esports versus Spiker GG. Um, this is kind of an interesting matchup, and I, I will say that like the way that these qualifiers have been placed up, if there are streams that happen of these qualifiers, and genuinely I don't know what the status on that is, but there, there might be um, for these final few games, um, this would be a fun one to watch because they're not really known teams. You don't really recognize any of these players. At least I don't really recognize any of these players. However, they're both organizations um, that have like a you know small but solid Twitter following. They've both been playing in the Tier 3 leagues. So Depth Esports have been playing in the Cardinal League recently, which is a pretty popular Tier 3 league. They're in 7th place out of 10 teams right now, which is, you know, not great, obviously. But at least, you know, they're putting in that practice and they're playing um, regularly, which I think is really important. And then Spiker GG have been playing in AGN, which is another one of those, like, top Tier 3 leagues that have a lot of those, um, like, underage players and also just, like, Tier 2, Tier 3 teams that are trying to get more practice in. So it's good to see that Spiker GG are also practicing there. They've got, they're currently sitting 3rd out of 10 teams in AGN, so different leagues it's hard to say that like definitively third place in agn is better than seventh place in like the cardinal league i have no idea what the strength of those leagues are like um other than just like glancing at their liquipedia pages or their websites 
but um, it seems like Spike or GG would be the favorites there, but it's really hard to tell. Then you've got Senshi versus Rent Free again. Senshi played in the last season of Challenger League. They have made one roster change. Thomas is now off of that roster. Um, Thomas, of course, a very well-known player. He jumped on Senshi um, to try to like boost him up last season, and it didn't really work, so he's now left the roster to move over to another team called Rent Free, who we'll be talking about very, very shortly. Um, and they've got Slippery back on the roster, I believe. Slippery was on Senshi when they qualified for Challenger League Season 11, and then I think due to, like, schedule conflicts he wasn't able to play anymore but he was still in good terms with all the team um and so when thomas left the roster he just sort of moved back on in so it should be a very natural transition for senshi it's essentially the same team but they do lose that like really rock and experienced member of the squad um of thomas and where is thomas gone thomas has gone to rent free which is of course the team that's playing against senshi and uh this is a pretty dangerous looking squad um all should be players you recognize benji thomas rexon filthy and drip uh, a really deadly roster that I just listed off there. Um, since you're going to have a hard time going up against this squad, this is kind of a, uh, a roster of like really veteran, uh, like experienced veteran players that we know are really good individually versus like a team that individually haven't accomplished anywhere near as much, but have been like playing together for a longer time. And you've got that extra drama of like Thomas drop, jumping from one roster to another. Not that I think Thomas is like snake in this roster or anything. Uh, Thomas is a really, really good guy. But um, it is kind of fun to, you know, inject some drama into that matchup. And that'll be a really fun one to watch, I think. Um, for those who, you know, may not know, um, Rent Free kind of comes from all over the place. Obviously, Tom is coming from Senshi. You got Rexon was playing on Luminosity Gaming last season before that team ended up uh, getting, like, disbanded. You also have Benji, who was playing on Okami. So he was in Challenger League and one of their better players um, in the last season of Challenger League. And, of course, had been around the block for a long time. Um, Filthy was on PogChamp last season, as I already mentioned, and of course has moved over from that team over to this team. So clearly he thinks that there's a little bit more potential or something wasn't working on PogChamp that he wants to, yeah, he wants to try his luck on this Challenger League qualifier team instead. And then of course Drip, uh, our favorite tier two player. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, uh, there's a lot to say about Drip's career recently, but, uh, no longer on a team as of, you know, a few weeks ago. And uh, now it's on rent free. Hopefully, for his sake, he can make it in his Challenger League and you know get some redemption because that kid's been through a lot. That's rent free versus Senshi. Then you've got um, the Oblation versus Big Fans. Um, yeah, I don't know who any of these teams are. Like, <laughs> this is a big question mark. The Oblation, like me, like I think I recognize some of these names. Like I am Razor sounds familiar. Inrio sounds familiar. Guy on a Bear sounds familiar. They've got like Vivard and Giddy, according to the Wikipedia page. I'm just reading names. I have no idea who these players really are. Um, Big Fans is a similar situation. Matt Bonger, Jordan, Crank is God, Phyllis12, and Cordell. I don't know, dude. These are like very much like nobody names. Um, Hopefully there's some surprises. I guess I would pick Oblation if you wanted me to pick a favorite because, again, some, like those names are a little bit more familiar, but like I couldn't place any of them. Like I've definitely heard like Inrio's names, name before. Where have I heard it? I don't know. And that's sort of uh, how you've got to judge these Tier 3 like competitions and Tier 2 competitions sometimes. If it's like a bunch of like nobody players, like if they've been in the scene, you know, chances are you've heard of them somewhere, and uh, that's probably a better sign than people that you've never heard of. So uh, definitely some question marks still with this matchup, but should be a fun one. And hopefully, you know, we can get some more of those new stars um, really showing up and making a name for themselves. Because I think that's really the beauty of open qualifiers for Challenger League is that you get a lot of those newer names in that people don't really expect to pop off. And then sometimes they do. Um, then we've got Bra versus the CFL. <laughs> I love some of these team names, though, um, and this one's pretty fun. Um, first of all, Bra is the exact same roster that you saw competing in Challenger League Season 11. So that's Fozo, Anthony, MGS, Rudy, J, and Sippin. Um, as for Bra, yeah. Pretty much the same roster here. Um, there we go. Bra obviously did very, very well in Challenger League Season 11. They um, kind of got just in due to some teams dropping out, but they did finish second place. Again, that was one of those like really younger squads that I think a lot of people weren't quite sure about, um, but really have popped off. Obviously, Fozo should be a well-known name. He's 
you know, one Challenger League twice in a row now. Um, he's looking to do it for a third time. Obviously has yet to actually play in Pro League. Um, almost similar to a drip situation, I suppose. But, uh, you know, this is a good roster. If you were paying attention to the Tier 2 scene last year, this shouldn't need any um, any introductions. Bra are nasty, and they are going to be a very dangerous threat. They're playing against CFL, which is uh, you know kind of a kind of a funny name, but also there's some there's some decent team or players on this uh, squad. They've got Geo, who was on Joe Esports last season, so that's obviously a very good player. You've got Leveron, who has played with Bra before in the past in qualifiers and stuff, um, and obviously is well known in the scene. And Subarctic, who's another name that I think a lot of people will recognize just by playing around the Tier Two scene um over the last couple of years and really like being one of those more standout players we've also got wing mexican and zwang i hope i'm pronouncing those right i very much uh, might not be but uh haven't really heard of those players hopefully they can show up and prove me wrong um but that's an exciting team and i think that probably uh they aren't getting as much credit as they maybe deserve so i would be i would be a little bit worried if you're like betting on bra here because that's a team that definitely could upset the uh the favorites in the matchup um but certainly you know there's no doubting bra are the favorites there so that's the cfl um then we've got last dance versus katsu this is another one um which should be a pretty fun uh matchup to watch I'll talk about Katsu first because you might recognize that team name uh, more than The Last Dance. Katsu have been around the scene for a long, long time. This core has been, you know, in and out of Challenger League for qualifiers and all that stuff. They used to be Elevate way back in the day when Elevate had a CL team. Um, this is Nog's team, Nog6, Rich. They've also got Noski again on this roster and Mean Green. Um, not that I've heard of Mean Green before, but the rest of these names are familiar. Very old school players, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. You know, these uh, these players have been trying to qualify for Challenger League a lot. They've done it successfully a couple times. They've had some really good Challenger League seasons a couple of years ago, but they haven't really found a lot of success recently. So they're back here in the 2020 season trying to find it again. And um, should be interesting. I don't think that they really match up to their opponents because I'm about to list you the opponent's roster. Um, but again, they could make that upset happen. They have that experience for sure. It's just that like history of really um, like rocky success um, and just like inconsistency that I'd be worried about for Katsu. They're playing against Last Dance. Last Dance is Factor, Young, Rainbow, Spades, and Kilo. That is a nasty sounding roster. Um, Young and Spades obviously playing on Evil Geniuses the most recent season of uh, Pro League. Young, a world champion, one of the most experienced players in the game. Spades had uh, quite a bit of experience before jumping on EG in the Tier 2 scene in Challenger League. He absolutely tore those uh, those leagues up and was an incredible player. Factor was also in Pro League last season on Luminosity Gaming, so another roster that sort of got torn apart at the end of last season. And uh, Factor, an incredible player once again, who uh, grinded through Challenger League with that squad and then able was able to uh, you know jump into Pro League and do quite well. Then you have Kilo, who was in Challenger League last season. He played for Okami. Again, not the greatest team, but Kilo really was um, putting up really good numbers when he was playing on that squad. Um, and he's been around the block as well. Like He's been in this Tier 2 scene for a long, long time, been on a bunch of different teams, and uh, has always been a top performer. So it's exciting to see Kilo in here. And Rainbow is kind of like... I mean, this is all like the old guard, right? These are a lot of old players. Um, but Rainbow, in particular, is a pretty old one. He goes back to Toon Squad. I think this is his most recent like stable team that he's been on um, way back in season nine of Challenger League. He's like been jumping around to a couple different um, tier two rosters or so I've heard, um, but hasn't really like stuck on any of them for a long time. Um, and so now finally, it seems like he's landed on a roster which uh, aims to be consistent again. And just given the rest of the names that, ha- you know, make up this lineup, um, you expect them to make Challenge League and you expect them to be playing for a long time. So this is a fun lineup. And uh, if you like some of the old guard and, you know, some revenge stories, and this is definitely going to be a fun team to watch. They have to beat Katsu first, um, which is not going to be a walk in the park, but should be doable for the last dance. Then you've got Joe Esports versus the Dogs. Joe Esports, um, again, almost the exact same roster we saw playing in Challenger League last season. They no longer are playing with Gio. Um, I think he was leaving the team before the rules got announced, but obviously Joe Esports ran into a bit of a brick wall when the nationality rules um, were announced for the 2020 season, where American teams are only allowed one Canadian player. 
they had two Canadian players, so they had to make some changes. Um, I think Gio was off that roster before, you know, that was really a thing. I don't really know, though. But they've replaced him with American anyways. J90 is going to be jumping up on this roster. Um, and again, this is one of those, like, underage players who I personally don't know a ton about. But I've heard a lot of good things about him from the people who are really involved in the Tier 3 scene. Um, in the underage scene, he's just turned um, 18 years old. And he's been known, you know, in the competitive uh, community for a long time is like one of those players to watch out for so j90 should be a really valuable asset to this roster joey sports were already like a super young team um so j90 jumping on this like lineup shouldn't really cause any uh, issues with that um you could definitely criticize joe for maybe having like a lack of leadership or a lack of experience but i you know that didn't hurt them too badly in the last season of challenger league i don't expect them to hurt them too badly in these qualifiers so joey sports uh look absolutely nasty and they should be looking to make it into cl this season they do have to beat the dogs uh which is another roster which doesn't look great but again it's not like a bunch of nobodies these are definitely respectable players cry magic glow emoji zoinkers b hop boy and bravo dog B Hop Boy, I think, is the only one that I don't recognize uh, out of these names. Again, they've just sort of been floating around the Tier 2 scene for a while. None of them have ever really found a lot of success, from what I'm aware. Um, in the qualifiers last season, this was sort of the core of uh, Burden the Biceps, which was Avian's team, if you can recall. Um, Cry Magic, Zoinkers, and Bravo Dog were all on that roster, and they looked pretty good. I thought they would make Challenge League. They didn't obviously but they got relatively far in the qualifiers and then glow emoji was on otf which was another challenge league qualifier team from season 11 who did really really good in the open qualifiers and then kind of tanked when it came to close quals so experienced players for sure capable of beating joe absolutely likely to beat joe no definitely not um but this is another one it's sort of a similar story to bra where it's like well you know there's going to be a favorite in this matchup and a lot of people are just going to point to this experienced team that they saw playing all last season like well this is definitely you know the rush that's going to win um but you shouldn't sleep on their side because there's definitely some potential for an upset here and uh you know the dogs are they're not a bad lineup and this is definitely a team that could go for some upsets so some experience there that'll be a fun one to watch for sure um and we'll see what happens the last matchup um, to make it to Challenger League for the 2020 season in the American Division is Vibe is Eternal versus the Favelas. We'll start with the Favelas. No, nah, we'll start with Vibe is Eternal because it's easier. Vibe is Eternal is Vanquish uh, Esports from last season of Challenger League. Maybe better known as Life is Pain. Maybe better known as Rise Nation. Maybe better known as Mouse Sports way back in the day if you uh, are an old school fan. <laughs> Who like to watch Pro League? Um, yeah, this is the roster that uh, contains like Acid and England and let me pull up their roster here. Wrath, Beastly, and Remorse as the coach as well as... I don't know why the Wikipedia page doesn't have their last player. Um, Prophecy. I don't know why Prophecy is not on the Wikipedia page, but he's definitely on that team too. I'm pretty sure um, they're not playing with Remorse as a player, but maybe they are. That's Vibe is Eternal, though. Um, should be the exact same roster as they were playing from last season. Again, a ton of experience on this lineup. They got third in Challenger League last season. They were very, very good. They were very close to qualifying for Pro League in Season 10. They were very close to winning the league in Season 11. Um, this is just kind of a roster that, you know, I think everybody knows is is really, really strong, but always just kind of come up short and uh, recently just haven't had luck getting back in a Pro League. So this is their shot once again, um, going back for Challenger League qualifiers. It's a new name, but it's the same players that you know and love, and uh, they're probably going to be you know just as deadly and uh, and competitive as they've always been. On the other side of things is the Favelas, which is definitely a less exciting team, but again, not nobody's. You've got Jolton, Diaz, Lucas, Br, Thumbus, Oria, and Kaino. Those last two, Oria and Kaino, I've never heard of before. This is somewhat the core of fans, if you remember from the qualifiers of Season 11. Fans were a team that I was kind of hyping up. I thought that they had a lot of potential there, and I still do um, to some extent, but obviously they've got a big challenge in front of them here. Jolton and Diaz Lucas were on that squad, and uh, they had some you know notable successes in the qualifiers. I think they just scraped into close qualifiers by getting like 16th, if I recall correctly, in the open quals, and then you know had some really tough opening matchups because you know they were such a low seed and, uh, and ended up losing pretty early in the close qualifiers. But this was a it was a formidable squad for sure, fans. Um, and now they've turned into favelas. They picked up Thumbus, which is another name that probably shouldn't need uh, much explanation. He's been around the block quite a bit. Jumped on a bunch of like low tier one, high tier two teams, um, maybe like low tier two teams as well. He's been on a couple of those. 
Um, most recently played on Reckless um, for the second half of Challenger League Season 11, which again was a you know not a great team in uh, in CL, but they made it. And uh, Thumbus has proven himself before, so uh, you know I expect him to be an asset to the squad for sure. The last two names are again you know somewhat no names to me, but. That doesn't mean that they're going to be irrelevant in these matchups. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be contributing. It just means that we don't really know what uh, they're capable of. So exciting stuff there for sure. And that's all the 16 teams participating in uh, the closed qualifiers for the North American Challenge League U.S. Division, plus all the Canadian Challenge League teams that have qualified slash are going to be qualifying um, shortly for their Challenge League. So a lot of information uh, to break down. I hope you found some of it interesting and uh, let me know your thoughts on, you know, who you expect to come on out and and win these games. I think most matchups um, have at least like one big favorite, but, you know, who do you think is going to upset? Because, again, some of these matchups, I think oh, there's some really interesting games going to happen. And uh, I think people are going to be surprised when you have like eight different best of threes going on to decide who makes it a challenger league. You know, there's bound to be some upsets there. It's probably not going to be the eight teams that people expect making it to challenger league. So, um, let me know what you think. Qualifiers are again going to be played on the 13th. Let me double check that. That's this Saturday coming up. So in a couple of days after this goes out, this should be going out on Friday. So tomorrow, this should be, uh, the qualifiers should be played out. Um, don't know if they're going to be streamed or not. Just follow everybody's Twitter. Um, I'll probably, I'll tweet it out. So follow my Twitter. <laughs> if, uh, if you're interested in watching some of these qualifiers, and yeah, that'll be it for me on uh, this video. I hope you did enjoy, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.